Africans to continue to support and cooperate with the government to ensure compliance of the directives. We are equally aware about the difficult situation in designated areas of Isli in Nairobi and Old Town in Mombasa where movement in and out of these areas has been restricted. I want to thank the residents of these estates for their cooperation and perseverance and want to urge them to continue observing the containment measures as advised by the Ministry of Health. These measures of hand washing, maintaining high standards of hygiene, observing of social and physical distancing, and proper wearing of masks have been said many times. But that is because they have proven to be the most effective in dealing with containment of this pandemic. I want to urge the residents of these estates not to tire, not to relent, but to continue with the same practice because that is our solution to beat this pandemic. I want to remind Kenyans that apart from COVID-19, there are other health challenges that continue to affect our people. Dealing with this pandemic does not in any way deny Kenyans the opportunity to visit our health facilities for treatment of other conditions. As government, we are encouraging our people to continue visiting their preferred medical facilities for treatment. Again, we have put in place all the infection prevention and control measures to ensure that these facilities are safe and do not pose any risk to those visiting them in terms of acquiring the COVID-19 virus. So that fear should not be there and Kenyans should feel comfortable visiting these facilities. Regarding our COVID-19 situation, if we come to the numbers for today, our surveillance and case management team tested 1,139 samples in the last 24 hours. Out of this number, 25 have tested positive for coronavirus. This brings to 912, the total number of positive cases in Kenya. 23 of these positive cases are male and two are female. The youngest case is 22 years old, while the oldest is 50 years. Cumulatively, the cases so far tested are 44,851. Out of the 25 new cases, 23 are Kenyans, while two are foreigners of Somali nationality. There are also 53 truck drivers who were tested and were positive at the various points of entry on the Kenya-Tanzanian border. They include 51 Tanzanians and two Burundi nationals. All were referred back to Tanzania. The distribution of cases by counties is as follows. Kajiado, six. Mombasa, five. Nairobi, three. Kiambu, three. Kwale, three. Taita Taveta, two. Garissa, two. And Meru, one. Meru, Taita Taveta, and Garissa are new counties to be infected with the disease, bringing to 23 the number of counties in the country that are now affected by the disease. The cases 
are distributed in the counties as follows. In Kajado, all six cases are truck drivers at Namanga. In Mombasa, four are from Likoni and one from Nyali. In Nairobi, the three cases are one each from Gidurai 44, Kawangware, and Starehe. In Kwale, all three cases are truck drivers at the Lunga Lunga border. The same applies to Taita Taveta, with the two cases being truck drivers who were tested at Voi. In Garissa, the two cases are both from Dadab refugee camp, one at Ifo and one at Dagahale. In Meru, the one case is from Buri. On a good note, we have today discharged 22 patients from hospital who have fully recovered from the disease, bringing the total number of people who have so far recovered from coronavirus to 336. We also have not lost any person to the disease and therefore our fatality cases remain at 50. In conclusion, I want to take this opportunity to thank all individuals and organizations who have lent us support in this fight. I particularly want to thank faith-based health facilities that have been offering health care to our people, both COVID-19 and non-COVID-19 services. Their contribution has helped in enhancing our health care capacity. Thank you. statement is with regards to the Tanzania border. What are we really doing? Because we're even seeing the president is talking and they are saying they're really relying on faith. And some of them were even mocking the statement made by our president. What is Kenya doing with regards to these threats that are coming from Tanzania? Number two, there are police officers who are asking people in their personal cars, even if there is only one person they want to take action against them if they do not have a mask. Is it a mask that if I'm alone in the car to actually wear a mask? Then there's the question of uh, what happened to the targeted mass testing that was launched probably in Kawangware and Old Town. Is it still going on or has the government gone lax on it? Wazir, my question, uh, first of all, let me begin with the uh, latest question pertaining the faith-based uh, hospitals where they're actually decrying to the government by actually imposing them to a 14% uh, tax uh, for the importation of the uh, PPEs. And then another question is the Kenyan government is so much determined by testing the Tanzanians at the border, uh, whereas the Tanzanian government uh, still insists but the cases in their country have actually reduced it drastically. So which is which, Waziri? Tanzanian government says that their cases are very low. Kenyan government continues to test. They get actually, in a day, they get 51 cases. Which is which, Waziri? Nancy Okore, kutoka KBC. Leo hii maafisa wa KMPD wa metuwa tarifa na wakasema ya kwamba wahudumuwa wa afya hususan kule katika maeneo ya county wamekuwa wapati zile hudu madhahene cha yef licha ya kwamba ndio wako katika mstari wa mbele kukabiliana na virusi vya corona na wanasema ya kwamba wamekuwa kito ule mchangu wa kila mwezi wa elfu moja miya saba lakini licha ya hayo yote wamekuwa wapati ule uh, zile huduma je kama wizara umepokea tarifa hizo na ikio umezipokea mnafanya nini kuwafa wale wa hudumu wa afya last one, last one yeah. Okay. 
Katibu ningependa kujua kama kuna utafiti umefanyika kubaini mbona jinsia ya wanaume wanakadhamizwa sana na huu ugonjwa kuliko jinsia wanawake. Asante. Okay. Uh, very last one uh, waziri. Um, my question is the what is the capacity of testing at the border points because we've been uh, witnessing uh, huge snarlaps of truckers at the Holili and uh, Namanga as well as uh, uh, Isebania in Migori. What is the capacity of testing in terms of deployment of kits? And number two, what is the waiting time of test uh, uh, for, for the truckers who are waiting for the test results? Because uh, some of them are lamenting that they are, they keep, uh, they are overstaying at the border and even risking to infect those at the uh, uh, who they come across at the border should they continue wait and turn positive. And my last question, are uh, the six cases that have turned positive in uh, in Namanga today, are they truck drivers from Kenya? Were they from contact tracing or their new cases? Okay. Those are a lot of questions, and uh, I will have to share them with my colleague here. Dr. Mbacho will, will answer one or two of those. Let me start with Kenneth Muridi. NTV, did you say? Yes, it is. NTV. Your question was about, uh, as a country, what are we doing in terms of uh, dealing with our neighbor Tanzania at the Tanzanian border, given that uh, the position that the country, that country has adopted with regard to COVID-19. I want to say that every country chooses how they are going to respond to this COVID-19. As a country, our choice is to be able to try to break the cycle of transmission of the disease the best that we can by being able to put in place measures that will break these cycles and will allow us to contain transmission of the virus. Among those measures, of course, is being able to control importation of the disease into the country. And importation right now is largely going to come from land and maybe water, but mostly from land. And that's why we have to tighten the surveillance at our border points so that we are able to keep away any persons who are infected. The fact that we are testing at those levels and the numbers that we are testing the results that we are seeing indicate that there is some level of threat from the Tanzanian side in terms of the number of people who are turning positive. And therefore, it is our duty to make sure that we keep testing and we keep out those who may be positive. If you remember, I told you what we are doing is actually going across and testing on the other side uh, for those truckers who are waiting to enter Kenya. If they turn out positive, they can't enter. If they are negative, they proceed with their journey. We will continue to do that. And I understand that uh, there has to be, within the spirit of East African cooperation, countries must be able to talk and come with some common strategy on how to deal with this cross-border pro uh, problem. Uh, I think despite uh, the pronouncements we are hearing, I'm sure that behind the scenes, there are some high-level discussions on how these East African community countries can work together to be able to contain the virus. Uh, the question about uh, whether one, when you are driving alone in your car, are required to wear uh, a mask. I think that needs some, some interpretation. I, I don't know. Maybe Colonel Oguna will give a shot at that. And see if he can give an answer to that one. Uh, targeted mass testing. Uh, have we have we tired of it, or what are we doing about it? Testing is the one thing that we cannot tire of because it is testing that will tell us where we stand with respect to our fight against this pandemic. So moving forward, testing is even going to be expanded in terms of the numbers that we want to test. And I have said repeatedly here at this podium that 
We do want to test, we want to continue, we want to go to different places, we want to follow the pathways that we have established in terms of high-risk areas, uh, and we will continue to do that. Our only limitation is the international supply line for these commodities. Fortunately, now we have received testing commodities, quite a number. You can see that our numbers have come up in the last uh, few days. I think we even surpassed 2,000 tests a day in the last couple of days. So we will see that we will continue to, to do that testing in some of these targeted areas and other targeted areas that we have identified. So testing will be a, 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 a feature, a constant feature in this pandemic. Uh, the, somebody asked about taxation on PPEs, 14% eh? taxation. I, I, I don't know. I don't think I, can, I have the answer for that question. It might require us to go and look back and see what's happening in that space in terms of uh, taxation on PPEs. Imported PPEs, that is. Huh? KBC. Uh, you talked about uh, a, f a fee of ile swala ni luizo kwa Kiswahili ili kwa kiuliza kuna gharama ambapo ya 1700 NHIF eh, ambapo nitamwachia ombacho atajibu hiyo eh? na kulikuwa na swala ya utafiti kwa nini kuna wanaume zaidi ambapo wanaadhirika na hii ugonjwa kushinda wa kike uh, ni kitu ambapo imeonekana kila nchi ambapo inai ugonjwa wanaume zaidi ndio wanaadhirika na haijajulikana kwa nini isipokuwa wameangalia hii virus inapatikana sehemu sem gani katika mwili ya mtu na sehemu moja ambapo wamepata wameona hii virus inapatikana katika semen ya wanaume kama hiyo ina link yoyote na hii haijulikani hii ni kitu ambapo bado inahitaji utafiti na nafikiri hiyo utafiti itakuja kutueleza kwa nini wanaume wanaadhirika zaidi tuongoje paka utafiti itupe hiyo eh, explanation hiyo Stephen Latoy testing at the border points i think i have answered the question regarding uh, our testing uh, uh, strategy in terms of uh, continuing to scale up testing uh, of course we have to we have to do testing in many different places we have to do the community testing going in in places we have to do the border testing we now have to do testing even of the restaurant workers so the demands on our testing are going to be high but we will be able to prioritize and we'll continue to do the testing Border points are critical for us because we are seeing more and more positive people who, if not tested, would be able to come into the, into the country and spread the virus. In terms of turnaround time of testing at the border points, uh, at some border points we have capacity to test around the border points. If you look at the Uganda border, we have facilities in... Uh, in uh, Busia, that are able to test. We have instruments there that are able to test. Kisumu is not very far from there. We can test in Kisumu. So along the Uganda border, I think we have capacity to be able to test quickly and turn around the results in good time. The problem we may have is along the Tanzanian border, whether it is Isabania, Namanga, or Taita Taveta, where we do not yet have functional laboratories that can do that test there and turn around the results very quickly. I mentioned a few days ago that at Namanga, we are planning to set up a laboratory there. We have just received a mobile laboratory through the East African Community uh, Project. That lab should be commissioned very soon. Once that lab is set up in Namanga, the turnaround time for these results should be fairly fast. 
I think within a day or so the results should be available. Uh, but I have heard, I have also seen on your network that some of the drivers there are saying they are waiting for up to four days for the results. Four days is not an acceptable turnaround time. I think we will have to, to, to do much better in terms of turning around the results as fast as possible. And of course that depends upon where we're doing the testing. So if we start doing it at Namanga, turnaround time will be lower. We're planning also to, to build capacity at, uh, in Migori, in Migori itself, either at, uh, in Migori town or at Zabania, uh, as well as some of these other border points like uh, Taveta, Taita Taveta and, and Lunga Lunga. That is one of the things that we're looking at how best we can be able to bring these tests closer to where they are needed, to decentralize these uh, tests and put them where they are needed. But that requires a little bit of work because it requires uh, getting the right instrumentation, putting that instrument in place, training people, and then getting them to be able to get all the supplies they need to be able to do the test. As we work on that, we will continue to collect samples from those points and take them to some central points, test them and return the results as fast as is possible under the circumstances. Let me hand over to Mbacho to answer the one question on, uh, on, uh, on the NHIF, and perhaps even he can try his luck at the one on tax, PPE uh, on uh, tax. Thank you so, tax. so much, uh, uh, CS. On question of uh, tax debate, I think it's an issue if they can be able to raise it up with the ministry. We can uh, try to have a hand because it's giving service to Kenyans. We can dis have discussions with the Minister of Treasure, uh, the, the National Treasury, about uh, uh, giving a waiver on the 14 percent. On the issues around non-service uh, provision for those who are already contributing to NHIF, we don't have that information, but I can assure you that we will get NHIF is within the ministries, one of the uh, sagas of the, ministry, uh, of the ministry. We will be able to ask uh, immediately today to be able to understand. But again, uh, if there's any information, please let them refer them the, uh, the question and the complaint to us, because normally any money which is deducted moves to the NHIF. There is an issue of uh, mass targeting. I think Waziri has already talked about it. It is one of the interventions that the ministry is taking, uh, carrying on in the country. Um, on the issues around turnaround time, we aim at 24 hours. And again, in our briefs, we had already requested drivers to be able to present themselves for testing 48 hours before they travel so that we can avoid that snaring of uh, the, the traffic at the border point. The issues of uh, those who have been tested are maybe having a likelihood of mixing with other people. When the technical team went to Namanga, we tried to address that area. And as you are aware, we had uh, already had discussions with the Namanga and the border point management to be able to identify a school for that short time that those who have been tested are going to be there so that they are separated and that we manage the movement of the people after testing. I think that's all what I, I would have wanted to answer. Thank you so much. Well, I was asked to try and uh, interpret the question regarding whether if you're in your own vehicle, you're supposed to uh, put on a mask. Indeed, we are actually trying to introduce a new practice and a culture that we have not been used to before. And in order for a culture that is new, for practice that is new, to be, become part of our everyday lifestyle, then it must be done over and over and over again. And that is precisely what, as a government, we have been insisting on, that if you are stepping out of your house, you must step out of your house with a mask on. But we do understand, too, that a private vehicle is not necessarily a public place. 
But in order for us to be able to cement that culture, to cement that practice, so that uh, each and every time we are, st you know, in, in a public place or in any other place we have the mask on, then we must find a way by which we can be able to achieve compliance. So what the policemen normally do is to try to encourage people who are in their private vehicles to have the mask on so that you don't leave your vehicle without that mask on because it, if it was not enforced, it was, if compliance was not encouraged, the likelihood of leaving that mask in your car is very, very high. So they are not supposed to arrest anyone in their private cars, but they're supposed to encourage anybody in their private cars to come out wearing that mask. And that is how we can be able to achieve practice, how we can be able to build a culture of putting masks at all times. Because this COVID will not go away tomorrow. And you've seen many other countries where they're putting masks all the time. It has become part of their culture. And that is exactly what you also want to achieve. Thank you. Is it illegal for me to drive in my car without a mask? I have answered you. If you listen to my answer, you'll get it. Thank you so much. That is all for today. Again tomorrow, another update. Uh, so any other question you may be having, please uh, reserve it until tomorrow. Thank you so much.